After extensive testing, I've made some changes to the Zoro deck in my previous video. I've been using this deck to terrorize the Sims. We'll go over the changes I made and I'll go over matchup tips afterwards. Let's get started. Cardi Kaizoku. First off is Uta. We cut her down from 4 to 2. I felt like I was drawing too many copies of her too often. She's a very nice utility card, but she can really bog down your hand. She doesn't have any counter power, and for 4 Dawn, she only has 4,000 power, which your, which your 2 cost can already reach. She feels pretty good at 2 though. Next up is Chopper. I've seen the light and seen how valuable it is to have Chopper blockers. He's one of my favorite cards to play on turn 1. He allows you to be very aggressive right out of the gate by being able to protect the Zoro. He can also protect Robin against green decks. They like to play Nekomomushi and tap Robin, then take her out with their leader. I even feel safe to play turn 5 or 6 Luffy with the chopper out. We also added 4 starter deck Brooks. We want more 2k counters in this deck. Saving a Zoro or Robin for just one more turn can make all the difference. He also basically pays for himself if you need to deploy him since he can give the 2 Dawn he costs to play to another character. Then he just needs 1 Dawn the following turn with Zoro's leader ability to reach 5k to attack enemy leaders. Next is Shanks. We cut him out. I originally put him in the deck just to show off that we had him. In testing, I was only able to actually use him effectively a couple of times. He has no counter power and he can't even take out 10 cost Kaido on the turn you play him. Which leads us to the next card. We added 2 round tables in. This is my favorite addition. This is the card that helps us in the Kaido and Kid matchup. It brings characters like 10 cost Kaido, 9 cost Kaido, starter deck Kid, 8 cost Kid, and more into range that we can easily kill. It can be used in a variety of situations. Minus 10,000 to anything means that Nami, that card that we played from turn 1 that the enemy ignores for the rest of the game, is suddenly an attacker that can take out a threat. You can even combo it with Robin and use her effect to straight up just kill a Kaido. One of the hardest situations to be in is post Kaido's board wipe. You're trying to build back up, but their 10 cost Kaido keeps swinging at your characters for 12k. Just roundtable him and kill him with your leader if you have to. It's kinda sad how this 4 cost event card does all the things I wanted from Shanks, and more. Next, we cut one jet pistol. Since we have two round tables, which is sort of a removal card anyway, I felt 4 was too much. Especially in the mirror match where the only things of value to jet pistol is Luffy. Using it on anything else is like trading a 4 cost card to kill a 3 cost or lower card. I also cut out all in 2 years to Shabondi. As nice as it was to search for cards, I feel the Zoro deck needs to use Dawn as optimally as possible. Having to decide between adding 1 Dawn to a character to burn through a 1 extra 1k counter versus searching for a card that you might have just drawn the next turn anyway, I decided it was better to prioritize keeping board pressure. We cut Radical Beam as well. We want protection mostly in the early game to keep up our aggression. Having to leave 1 Dawn open really slows us down. And it doesn't reach its 4000 power efficiency until after you've lost 3 life. By that point, your early aggression window is already gone. I found it much better to just use a 2k counter like Brook. That way I can keep pounding out damage on curve and getting the hits to stick. If you need Radical Beam to save an attacker later on, Chopper can pretty much do that and he could have been played on any other turn prior. I've been having a lot of success with this decklist against all leaders. Here are some general tips against them. A good opening hand for the Zoro deck includes cards like Robin, Zoro, Chopper, and Nami. Against Kid. Don't let him keep Bonnie and Momonosuke alive. The more times he is able to activate them, the more 2k counters they're adding to their hand. A Robin hidden behind a chopper works great against this. Once their searchers are dealt with, be as aggressive as possible until they start to play their key cards, like 7 cost kid and 8 cost kid. I like to do this by going wide and getting them to burn counters to defend against many attackers. Once his threats are in play, you'll have to switch focus to killing them while trying to get in as many hits into their face to get them to exhaust their counters in hand. They will usually get to the point where they turtle up really hard. But if you've been effectively chipping away at them the entire game whenever possible, this is when you use cards like Luffy or Diablo Jam to get that last hit in. Round Table can also equalize their late game tempo and keep you alive. Against Kaido, I like to play aggressive and play wide early on. I swear it feels like every card in a purple deck is a 2k counter. You want to get them to burn through these as much as possible. Some key Dawn breakpoints to watch out for are At 7 Dawn, he can play King and take out 2 of your characters. At 9 Dawn, he can play 9 cost Kaido and kill 1 character and he also has Rush. 
at Tendon, you can expect 10 cost Kaido to come out and board wipe. They run 12 blockers. Luffy and Diablo Jam are necessary to close out games. Round Table can also equalize their late game tempo and keep you alive. That puts the two hardest matchups out of the way. Here are some small tips against the other leaders. In the Zoro matchup, it's kind of a 50-50. You really have to balance aggression and trading. And you have to hope that they're playing an inferior version of the deck with cards like Starter Deck Nami and so on. Against Law, you really need Robin. Play wide and aggressive. They can run 12 blockers and you want to threaten them with multiple attacks. They only have 4 life so getting them to within an inch of living is easy. Then close out games with Luffy or Diablo Jamb. Against Doflamingo, you want to play aggressive and wide. Use 2k counters to keep your characters alive. They don't have access to rush and their removal only targets one character so you need to keep board presence strong. I hope all my testing and learnings have helped you with playing your own Zoro decks. I've been having a blast playing and fine tuning this revised version of the deck. Let me know if you end up using my deck list. I'll be posting matches using this deck in the following days, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss seeing it in action. Alright, bye. Kaizoku.